Mike, you know the Patriots better than anybody. How many third round picks do they turn these picks into? I do they have, at some point have every pick in the third round? Let's talk about a team that we really undercover here at the ringer.com, Bill Simmons's website. The New England Patriots. We, have we ever talked about them? Never. This is new for us. Four picks in the first two rounds of the upcoming draft, two first round picks, two second round picks. The recent Brandon Cooks trade got them the 23rd overall pick. What is Bill Belichick going to do with all of that high round firepower? And crucially, Will the Patriots be looking for Tom Brady's heir apparent at quarterback? So, Mike, you know the Patriots better than anybody. How many third-round picks do they turn these picks into? I do was, they have, at some point have every pick in the third round? I think this is going to be an interesting situation for understanding value and the draft process for Belichick because he's sitting there with two five-year contracts, two guys that should start, okay? So he's got two five-year – he trades Brandon Cook – away who's making eight and a half million. He picks up a cheaper contract for five more years and gets away from having to pay Brandon Cook's Mike Evans money or, you know, ridiculous numbers ridiculous. above 12 million, which the Rams are going to do, no question about that. I don't get it. So neither does the Patriots, obviously. That's why they made the move. So now he's sitting there. Does he trade one of those assets, one of those five-year contracts up to get a quarterback of the future? And is it worth it? And I think that's really where the discussion has to be centered on. Is there a player in this draft that you should cash in a asset to move up to get. And I don't know if that's right. Also, 23 and 31, how high can you go? Right. Because you, you get into a, a fairly sticky situation with the quarterbacks because if Lamar Jackson goes in the mid first, and who the hell knows where Lamar Jackson is going to go, but if he goes 14th or 15th, something like that, and you have five guys who go, five passers who go in the first 15, 16 picks. Then you're left with Mason Rudolph. Is that your only option? We yeah. can see five guys go in the top ten. Absolutely. You know, I, I think, look, the, the Ravens are the sle sneaky team here, your team. They are sleeping because they could easily take Lamar Jackson, and they're at, what, 16? 16. I mean, there's a lot of – and then you've got Buffalo who's Good sitting there that. and not saying anything. They've got a couple assets. So I think the Patriots would probably be best to see the landscape. And if those quarterbacks go in the top ten fairly quickly – then there's nobody that I think they can race up to get because they got to just sit there and say, this isn't our time to get the quarterback. We're going to have to find somebody else to come in and develop because we know we have Brady for at least another year. I ideally, I think if Lamar Jackson slipped, I could see him making that move. Maybe. But I don't think he will. If it's not a quarterback, it's what at those two picks? Oh, I, I think it's an offensive lineman. Look, the only position on their team right now that they don't have situated because of the Nate Solder deal with losing Nate Solder to the Giants is the left tackle. So they have to get that. They drafted Antonio Garcia last year in the third round. He was on NFI with a blood disorder. He comes back. He's been cleared to play medically. So they get a left tackle. Can he play left tackle? Not sure. He was an undersized kid at a small school. He's going to need some growth and some development. I think they need to get a another you know defensive player. Their, their speed of their defense, and I think this cost them in the Super Bowl, their horizontal speed of their linebacking core was not good enough last year. Is there a defender in the back half of the first round who either you think will just be there at 23 or 31 anyway, or who you think they can move up like a, a manageable amount? Because look, the Jets gave up, what, three second round picks to move from six to three. It's going to cost, to your point, a lot of draft capital to move into quarterback range. Is there a defender who you think is... Yeah, a difference maker I, for them. I, I don't think so, and I think he'll sit there because I think the one thing we've known, other than the, other than the Chandler Jones draft and the Dante Hightower draft, trading up has not been what they do. Right. And so the idea to give up those contracts, which they value more than anything. I mean, you can plan your team out. You know, the Rams gave away a, 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 an asset of a second-round pick and a, and a long-term four-year contract for one-year rental of Sammy Watkins. Not a real good thing. Then they gave up another five-year contract for a, a rental of – Brandon Cooks, does it work out? I don't know. So that's not the modus operandi in New England. I think, I think if anything, to your point, I think they start trading those things down and end up with five twos or three th or six threes or whatever, and then end Remember, up with Remember, it only play. gets cheaper in the second round. Yeah, and the level of talent. See, this is where I, you know every draft is supposed to be the greatest draft of all time, right? And there's drafts that are just not good enough. And this draft has some linebackers. It has probably not as many defensive linemen as you would like that can rush. And so you have to kind of weigh it. Offensive linemen, it's fairly good. Last year it was a bad offensive line draft. So I think they can fill some needs. It just depends on the level and how they yeah, see there's it. There's some great athletes in this draft, especially in the first round. I mean, Edmonds from Virginia Tech, either of them. Um, 
incredible athletes. There, there's spark scores all over that. You love spark. I'm a big athlete guy. I like athletes. You love spark, and thus you hate Minka Fitzpatrick. That's correct. We'll get to that. But I mean, Belichick loves the three cone drill as much as any human being alive. He understands that stuff, and so. Yes, there are those three-cone kind of freaks in the back half of the first round. Every draft, you have to determine where the line of demarcation is. Where is where is player A just as good as player B? Right. Where does that happen? And in this draft, I think it probably happens right around 14. The, you know, it's interesting with Edmonds specifically and a lot of those athletes on defense, even Derwin James, even Minka Fitzpatrick. When you get those these wacky quarterback drafts, I mean, it almost reminds me a little bit, a little bit, of the draft two years ago where Goff and Wentz go and then Joey Bosa, Jalen Ramsey, and, you know, guys like that. Jalen Ramsey is an incredible talent. Jo- Joey Bosa would have been the first pick in most drafts. He wasn't. He was the third pick. And so when you have these sort of stacked quarterback years, weird things do tend to happen. I think you have to monitor that because there could be a big slip for one of those guys. Yeah, I mean, look, Chris Bell is sitting there at six, and he's praying that everybody wants quarterbacks. Yeah. I mean, or he, Barkley, or Saquon Barkley. Or, or Saquon. You know, he's praying for that to happen. And you got the Browns at four. So if three quarterbacks go on the first, th- first three picks, and, you know, the Browns pick a running back, and all of a sudden he's sitting there with – he might end up with Chubb, who might be the best player in this draft. What do you guys think about wide receiver for New England? Because mm-hmm. traded Cooks – Amendola is gone. Deion Lewis, who was a big pass catching yeah. weapon for them, not there anymore. Gronk can't be the only person who catches balls. So, do you think it's worth investing in a receiver with one of those first four picks? Should they keep all of those picks? Not the best wide receiving class we've seen in recent drafts. I, I would say this. I think Belichick's taken the opposite approach to receivers in terms of he feels like, and I'm not speaking for him, but the value of tr- of the, the first round receiver we saw it last year, John Ross. We saw all these guys go, Corey Davis at the top of the round. The value you can't get out of it. You're better off finding a guy in the third or fourth round right. that you feel like you can play. And whether he's hit with Jordan Matthews or Kenny Britt, one of those guys on his back end of his roster, but to invest, you know, everybody wants to draft receivers. I mean, I can still remember the first draft I ever was with Belichick. He, the first thing he did was went to the receiver board and said, get all those guys the hell out of there. But you can find receivers in the third, fourth, fifth round. You can find guys that can make plays and develop them into. That's why the Odell Beckham conversation with New England is hysterical that it would even be out there because they're going to bring somebody in and pay more than Gronk? I don't think so. And more than Brady, by the way. More than Brady. Yeah, I mean, which is, you know, it's just all just talk. How is Tom versus Time doing? How long do we have left? No, in the oh, world as the a, as a quarterback in the NFL. Of, you know, they were going to do a binge mode, Tom versus time. One day. But One what do day. we think, really? Because that's part of assessing where yeah. it's valuable for them to actually consider taking a quarterback. Should Lamar Jackson fall? I don't think any of us think he will fall that far. But Mason Rudolph, maybe. They held a private workout for him. Maybe he's there late in the first round. Does that make sense? I mean, they could take him. They worked out. They had a private workout with Lamar Jackson. I'm, the one thing about the Patriots, they will do their due diligence on every quarterback in this draft. Uh, they won't maybe waste time on Josh Rosen or any of those guys figuring they can't get them. But I think the levels down below, they will. And I think that at the end of the day, I think they're going to realize that that pick is more valuable than reaching for a guy who's just as good as Jacoby Brissett. I like Jacoby Brissett. I like. Jacoby I do too, Brissett but they got him too. in the third round. You know, but none of these. You know what the fascinating thing is? We haven't even gone in this conversation. None of these guys, Rudolph, are better than Jimmy Garoppolo. Right. Right.